Starting a business is really exciting and it's gonna be full of mistakes along the way. But some mistakes aren't as easy to brush off. Like this $2,000 fine the IRS hit us with before we even made our first dollar. Hey everyone, I'm Bradford with the Penny Majors out of Personal Finance. And I don't want you to get a heart attack in the mail like I did. So I'm gonna walk you through the five steps that you need to follow to start a business, as well as share some of the lessons that Chase and I have learned along the way. Now, before we even get to step one, there's something I want you to consider. And that's gonna be not making the mistake of starting your business too early or never starting at all. Now in the first case here of starting too early, you have a passion for something that you know you can make money with at the same time. So you decide you're gonna start a business. Stop, stop right there. You aren't ready yet. Or you go out and start dropping money on equipment, subscriptions, building up a website so other people can see that you have a business. You need to have a well thought out plan before you begin. Now on the other side of this equation, we're gonna have somebody the same passion, same ability to make money, but they're just never ever quite ready. They make plan after plan after plan, but they're not able to get it quite perfect. They're just worried that if they start with what they currently have, they're going to be doomed to failure. You need to stop with that right now because that is going to be a case of analysis paralysis. You're constantly tweaking and thinking about something, but you never actually get to the execution stage. And if you never do that, you're going to fail just as much as if you burn yourself out by not having a plan to begin with. And that's going to bring me to step one of starting a business is that you need a business plan. When making a business plan, one of the first things you need to develop is going to be a mission statement for your business. What is the reason you're starting this business? Now, wanting to make money to be able to set yourself and your family up for success in the future is great, and that can be your personal goal. That's not the reason you're starting this specific business. You need to identify who your audience is and what type of problem you're solving. At A Penny Pincher's Guide, our mission statement is to provide the building blocks to lay the foundation for financial success. This helps us focus our efforts on what we are trying to do, but also just as importantly, what we are not trying to accomplish. You need to know what your goals are not, so that way you don't develop a case of scope creep, where you start trying to say, hey, I wanna do this, and this, and this, And eventually you spread yourself way too thin and you start failing at all these various objectives when you initially just had your one or two things that you were initially trying to accomplish. Once you've identified the direction you want to take your business, you need to develop a step-by-step plan to get there. The more specific, the better. What are your duties and responsibilities going to be to the business? How many hours a week are you going to work on marketing to try to attract new customers? If you have a partner or multiple partners, who is going to be in charge of what and what metrics are you going to use to measure whether or not they are successful? What kind of expenses are you going to have on a daily, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis? When you first start out, you don't need to have every minute detail ironed out or else you're going to get in the case of analyzing forever and never executing. But you do want to have a solid plan that is going to serve as the guide rails for your business to make sure that day after day after day, you are moving one step closer towards the goals that you've set for yourself. With your business plan in hand, that's going to bring you to step two, and that's going to be picking your business structure. You need to figure out how you want your business to be structured as an entity when it comes to both legal and taxation purposes. Now you have a ton of different options to choose from and figuring out which entity is gonna be the best for your specific situation is worth a video all in of itself. But some of the most common entities that people use to structure the business are gonna be a sole proprietorship, a partnership, an LLC, or a full-blown corporation. Now those order, it basically starts in easiest to form to most complicated as well as the most additional regulations that you're gonna be required to follow when it comes to both state and federal requirements. And kind of quickly touching on each one, a sole proprietorship is basically where it's just you running your business. You don't have any sort of specific entity set up, it's you, all the income comes directly to you and you repay it with your individual taxes. And a partnership is gonna work very similarly, although you are oftentimes required to file that formation of that partnership with the state that you're operating in, but the same thing, all the income is gonna go directly to you and you're gonna pay that on your individual taxes. Now an LLC is kind of a hybrid between a sole proprietorship and a corporation because all of that income that you generate is gonna be paid on your individual taxes, but at the same time, you are given some of the liability protections that a corporation offers. Because if somebody sues you because of something your business did, they're only gonna be able to go after the assets that your business has control of, and most likely not able to go after your individual assets unless a lawyer does something which is known as piercing the corporate veil. And then the last entity I wanna talk about in this video is gonna be a corporation. Now that's what you're gonna be thinking of when you think of places like McDonald's, Lowe's, all those Fortune 500 companies, and but a corporation is an entirely different beast 
but where the corporation is treated as its own sort of person. And then you're going to have the issue of double taxation where you're paying both corporate taxes as well as individual taxes when the money finally trickles down to you. But once you've decided what sort of entity you want to pursue, then you're going to have to figure out what sort of requirements you have to follow to be able to set that up in your individual state. Now, in many states, when it comes to a sole proprietorship, there's nothing that you really have to file by basically saying, I want to start, and then you start the next day. Now, basically, all the other entities, partnership, LLC, corporation, now, if you start into any of the variations of those, limited partnership, S Corp, C Corp, all of those things are going to require some sort of filing to be done with the state that you live in. And that's also going to usually come with some sort of filing fee to get your paperwork processed. Now, at that point, you're going to have the option. You can either go about filing all of those documents on your own, or you can turn to some sort of business that offers those services of filing for you, like LegalZoom or Zen Business. But do know that it's going to come with some sort of additional fee because you are paying for their services. And then the last thing you need to do when considering of setting up your entity for your business is going to be getting your EIN or employer identification number. This is effectively the social security number equivalent for your business. Now, if you're a sole proprietorship, most often you're not going to be required to have an EIN, but you might want one anyway to be able to set up a business banking account. Now for all the other entities that are out there, you are going to be required to have an EIN to be able to form and set up your business entity. Now on this note, please, please, please do not pay somebody else to get an EIN for you because in less than five minutes, you can get it fast, easy, and free by getting an EIN through the IRS's website. And I'm gonna post a video walkthrough in the description down below so you can go and understand how to do that after you finish with this video. Step three of forming your business is you need to have a mindset switch. You can no longer view whatever you're doing to make money as a hobby, even if it started out like that. You need to view this as a full-blown business, regardless of how much money you're actually making. Now, this is a really easy trap to fall into, especially if your business started out as a hobby. That's not to say if you have a hobby and you want to make a little bit of cash on the side to subsidize it and you want to continue treating it as a hobby, that is perfectly fine. But if you want to make it a business, you can no longer view it as a hobby. You have to view it as a business. Now, this means you need to give it all the effort that you would at any other job that you hold, except in this case, you are your own boss. You don't have some other boss to hold you accountable if you show up to work late or you deliver a shoddy product. That is all on you, which is great because somebody else isn't over your shoulder, but that means you need to develop a much higher sense of responsibility and accountability for your actions. You need to set your own guidelines and rules of what you want to deliver and then hold yourself accountable to those, whatever they are. Now, when Chase and I first started out, we definitely fell into the trap of treating our business exactly like a hobby because that's how it started out. We both love talking about finances and helping other people understand their finances better, but that's basically how we continued to treat it for the first year or so. We would just take whenever we had some free time, we'd write a script, we'd shoot a video, but really it was just kind of forming it in and kind of filling it in just like we would if we were gonna go play some video games or go on a night out. We weren't treating it with the real sense that we would with our full-time jobs. We had not yet made that mental switch. While we still learned a lot along the way, we could have definitely grown much faster and become monetized and start making real money significantly faster if we had started out right from the get-go on treating our business like an actual business and not a hobby. And this is really important because if you want anybody else in your life to view this business that you're starting as a legitimate endeavor that is worthwhile of your money and your time, you need to treat it like that first. Because if you aren't respecting it like that, nobody else is going to. And that's gonna bring me to step four, which is you need to find a work-life balance with this new business you're creating. When Chase and I first started out, we had a ton of enthusiasm for our business, and we still do, by the way, but we'd spend hours upon hours researching, writing, filming, editing, engaging in various online communities to try to share our content. But our enthusiasm was not equally shared by our wives. And that's no knock against them. We both have amazing wives and we definitely married upwards. The point is, is that while we were super excited about our business, this was not a passion that our wives shared, which makes sense because it wasn't something they came up with. From their perspective, we just picked up a new hobby that we wanted to spend money and more importantly, insane amounts of time on. And from their perspective, why were we spending so much time on this business of ours when we could be spending our free time with them? Now for us, that meant we needed to set up specific chunks of time after we got done with a regular full-time job that we were going to take and set aside to write, record, shoot videos, and then put them out. 
and anything outside of those times, we need to be focusing on our individual lives, building our relationships with our family and friends. Now, this is a super easy trap to fall into if you work your business primarily out of your home. You're already at home anyway, so why not take some time to work on your business to be able to grow it a little bit faster and make money faster? And that can be just so insidious. You just take a little bit extra time here and a little bit extra time there, and soon enough, you're working all of your time at home on your business instead of spending that time with family and friends, which you would have done beforehand. So when you have your free time that you've set aside from your work-life balance, put your phone down, take your business, set it to the side, and spend that time with your family and friends and working on those relationships with those that are closest to you. Now, let's not say at all that you cannot grind it out. Put your nose to the millstone and grind, 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 build your business, build it faster, build it harder, and make money sooner and make a lot more of it. You just need to be intentional about what you're gonna do. If you weren't gonna be in the grind mentality, communicate that with your family and friends so they understand what you're doing. Don't just make plans and get caught in the rigmarole of I'm gonna continue just working on this for five more minutes. And then you end up blowing off and pushing away the people that are closest to you. Set that schedule and adhere to it, respect it, and then when you aren't working, step aside. Now step five is not understanding how business taxes work. And that's gonna bring me back to this guy right here, which was the result of me not understanding the differentiation between my individual taxes for my W-2 job and the tax implications of starting up a business. Now the backstory behind this specific fine is when we started our business in 2019, so the first time we filed was gonna be in 2020. Now when the tax deadline was extended until July of that year, I foolishly thought that, oh, that means everybody's taxes deadlines were extended until July. And while the news posts from the IRS certainly didn't help, I didn't understand that there were different filing deadlines for businesses as opposed to individuals. So we filed our taxes several months late and that resulted in us getting hit with that fine. Now, fortunately, the IRS does have a process that in the first time you're filing your business taxes, if you do file late, like we did, you can call and basically request to have that fee waived because it was kind of like your first time making mistakes so you kind of get a one freebie, and then after that, everything else is on you. But really the whole problem of it, which could have been avoided, was that I and Chase didn't understand how business taxes worked. Again, we didn't understand that there were different filing deadlines. We didn't really understand how it worked to pay your quarterly tax estimate, which is something you have to do when you're self-employed. Becoming familiar with the variety of additional tax forms that you're gonna be responsible for is extremely important as a business owner. Even if you have a CPA that's gonna be handling all your taxes, you wanna have at least a general understanding of what's going on because it's gonna help you understand better what you're actually paying that CPA for. And you can do a sanity check when they give you back your tax forms. You can look and be like, oh, that looks right, that looks right, that looks right. Hmm, this section looks really questionable. I wanna bring it up with my CPA and at least maybe it's my misunderstanding, but CPAs are people too and sometimes they do make mistakes. And that's you two working together to make sure you get your taxes in on time and done correctly. And I would highly recommend that before you formally start your business, you take the time, whether it's just a few solid hours, a couple days, to understand what are gonna be your additional responsibilities when it comes to taxes, that as you transition from your W-2 job to starting up your side hustle, full on business, that you understand exactly what you're going to be required to do, or at least get a network together to be able to hold you accountable by getting a CPA or something like that. And since we don't want you to get a heart attack like we did with that fine, that's why we put together this playlist of business taxes. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, just remember to pinch a little.